So it is an interesting time in general right now for battery electric vehicles, and you could say the car industry as a whole. As we go through this kind of crazy transition period into electrification, albeit a little bit more slowly than you'd expect right now. But I've been having a look through some of the articles that are available online to try and dig into some of the trends that we're seeing, and one of them was quite surprising. Now, in general, new car registrations are up over the equivalent period last year, but when you look at the data from a more granular perspective, you start to see some interesting trends. So unexpectedly, battery electric vehicles, plug-in hybrid electric vehicles, mild hybrid electric vehicles, hybrids in general, all on the uptick. But petrol registrations were on the uptick above and beyond those. So people kind of getting back into the petrol driving experience, perhaps people that might have been driving battery electric vehicles before. But the purpose of this video is really to answer the question, is it still cheaper to run a battery electric vehicle over the equivalent petrol electric vehicle? And we'll come on to that in a bit. I'm out now in a Taycan Turbo S, which is really a bad comparison to anything because it's bonkers quick and is ridiculous sums of money. So we're not going to use that as the comparison here. But it was quite surprising to see that uptick in people registering more petrol vehicles again, buying new petrol vehicles. Got to look at some of the reasons why that might be. Now, hark back to the middle of 2021 in the UK, and of course we had that rather interesting fuel crisis situation where the government went to the media and said, we've got a huge shortage of HGV drivers, all the petrol forecourts are going to run dry because there's no one to fill them up. And of course there was panic buying and we saw the highest petrol prices we've seen in a long time leading out of that you know pushing sort of two pound a liter in the UK which is absolutely crazy and unexpectedly after that time inquiries for new battery electric vehicles went through the roof an increase of about a thousand percent or so I read which isn't surprising people thinking you know I'm done with this how how dare this situation be able to control when I choose to drive my car. Obviously a battery electric vehicle, if you're fortunate enough, you can plug it in at home and charge it at home and you're good to go, right? You don't have to rely on petrol. Of course, fast forward to now and petrol prices have come down significantly and the cost of energy in the UK where we pay some of the most expensive prices for energy in Europe have gone up immensely. So. This could be one of the key reasons why people are thinking, you know what, I'm just not ready to commit to battery electric vehicles. That, combined with the infrastructure, you've seen the queues of people charging these things or trying to charge these things, might just be putting people off a little bit. Alas, it's not looking so good for the battery electric vehicle right now. And there's some reasons behind that. So, well, a few, a few factors really we can discuss. And, the first of those that I want to get into is price drops. Tesla have lowered their prices off the bat. And we are obviously going to see an impact on the rest of the vehicles because of that, because they have to stay competitive to a certain degree. Obviously, the wait time situation for battery electric vehicles was very, very high indeed, right? That is starting to come down a little bit now. And I think in general, you're just going to get to a situation where battery electric vehicles become cheaper and more cost efficient to produce, which of course is going to have a very positive impact on the prices. But there is one other factor as well that we need to talk about, and that is the potential flood of secondhand of used electric vehicles coming to the market vehicles that might have been on lease, vehicles that might have been procured through companies, because obviously there's lots of great VAT incentives when you do so, that are coming to the market. And of course, then you have a situation where the flood of secondhand of used electric vehicles coming into the market has an impact on prices. Now, when I got this car, this rather ridiculous Porsche Taycan Turbo S, I could have flipped this off the bat for maybe 15,000 pounds more than I paid for it which would have been pretty good, but would have left me without a car and probably an 18 month wait list for a new one, given the way things are were at the time, I should say. But 
now that is a very different story. The values of these, even though it's a Porsche and you expect it to be bulletproof, has had a little bit of a wobble. And I wouldn't be getting anywhere near list for this if I was to sell it right now. So looking a bit more favorable from a secondhand buyer perspective. Now I also wanted to really dig into that point that I made earlier that, you know, is it cheaper to run a battery electric vehicle over a petrol. To do that, we're going to go back into the studio because we we need to do that by comparing a like for like. And there's some chassis out there, some build platforms we can use for that. So let's get straight back into the studio. So back inside the studio here, so we can look at the facts and figures and answer the question, is it still more economical to buy an EV versus the petrol version? And to compare like for like, we've got to choose a platform, at least in my mind anyway, where you can get an EV or an ICE version of the same platform. And there's plenty out there to choose from. For example, a Golf a Mini, or the one I want to look at today is the Up, the VW Up, that platform which also shares itself with the Skoda Citygo and the Seat Mi. A tiny platform, very cute car, and one you might like to use as a daily run around in the city where you live. Now, here is the thing. The E-Up, the E-Up, probably the, be <laughs> the best name car ever. I think it sounds very Yorkshire if you're from the UK, E-Up. But it, that's the name of the car, and it has been an absolute breakaway success. Indeed, the order book is closed and I think there's orders through to 2024, 2025 of this thing maybe because it was so successful. So VW closed the books on it and people absolutely queued up to get this thing. So a big wait and quite exciting times for those who are going to get one because I think it's quite a cool little car, quite a cool little platform. But yes, indeed. So you can get the E version of that, the battery version of that, or you can of course get the petrol version of that. The petrol version is a one liter, so it's very low spec, but very friendly for your first car, for example, or that city runaround. Now I wanna look here at the cost of running the thing. So to start with, let's take a look at the electric version. So the battery electric version. Now it has a 32 kilowatt battery, which is quite a small battery. And the WLTP range quote for that is 160. No way you're getting that because you never do with a battery electric vehicle. So I'm going to say maybe 120, 130 on the range maximum. And that is of course zero to 100% when normally you'd run at about 20 to 80%. But let's just say for argument's sake, like it's a petrol tank, you're doing zero to 100 empty to full kind of thing, right? So if you're charging at home, to fill that battery pack up completely, you're looking at about 11 pounds. That's based on it being a 32 kilowatt hour battery pack and paying about 35 kilowatts, sorry, 35 pence per kilowatt, okay? So about 11 pounds 50-ish to fill it up completely. And that's not allowing for any waste because it's not a completely efficient process. So it's probably going to be a little bit more, maybe 12, 13, 14 pounds. Who knows? So that is what you're going to get for the cost of filling it up. Now, let's look at the ICE version, which is a one liter. It has a 35 liter tank in the UK to fill that up now. And I'm saying we're, we're probably going to be paying about one pound 50 a liter on petrol. I know there's higher and lower depending on where you're at but let's just say one pound 50 a litre for argument's sake that's going to cost you about 52 pounds to fill the thing up how far are you going to get on that well let's just say you're uh, the, going by the figures they quote 55 mpg 7.5 ish gallon tank that should actually be good for a whopping 412 miles but in a real world, you're never getting that. So having a look through the forums, people are getting about 350 miles out of a tank on this thing. And because it's a small engine, 
you are probably going to be pushing it quite hard. I, I tend to find if I've got a car with a very small engine, it's not got a lot of power. You can kind of rev the thing quite hard to get it to move. And of course, that drinks a bit more fuel. But let's say real world, 350 miles out of a tank. That means going back to the, the E version, the battery version, uh, which is, of course, 11 pounds to fill it up for 120, 130 miles. So if we amplify that up, you're going to be paying about 30 pounds of electricity cost to get a roughly equivalent range. OK, so we're looking at 52 versus 30, which kind of means that the electric version of the car is indeed cheaper at this stage. That's assuming you can charge at home. Now, I have a feeling that quite a lot of the, the people that use an EAP might not necessarily be charging at home. They're going to be charging at city uh, charging points or garages, wherever there's a, a rapid charger. And you're going to be paying a lot more per kilowatt for your energy there. Now, l let's say we, we take that up to 60p a kilowatt hour. You're going to be looking then at 50 pounds there or thereabouts, which is roughly the same as the petrol version. So that is quite a similar story for the electric version and the petrol version. Now, you could be paying even more. If you're paying a, a pound per kilowatt hour at some rapid charges, then the whole model totally breaks down and the petrol is way more favorable. And I think we're in a bit of a tricky situation with energy costs in the UK right now. As I talked about earlier on in the video, we pay some of the most expensive electricity in, in the world and, and certainly in Europe. It's crazy prices at the moment. You know, if we were going back 15 years ago, 20 years ago, when the price per kilowatt was 10p, maybe less, uh, it it would be a very different story. And there's just there'd be no comparison because petrol has kind of stayed relatively. I mean, it's gone up a bit, but over the past 10 years, yes, it's peaks and troughs, relatively the same. Whereas energy, that the electricity costs have shot up massively. There is no escaping that, and it doesn't look good for them getting lower anytime soon. So, so there, the model really starts to fall apart, and it's it's hard to actually recommend a, an electric version over that one litre petrol version right now. And here's the clincher. Here's the big thing here. The electric version is expensive. So much so, I haven't spoken about this yet, that the petrol version of the UP is £10,000 cheaper. £10,000 cheaper than the electric version which is a crazy difference. That's gonna pay for your insurance, your energy, and then some. And yes, I appreciate you might get free road tax and no congestion charge, depending on where you use the car. But are those days of no road tax and congestion charge really gonna continue for EVs? I don't think they are, because the revenue that's being lost needs to be accounted for at some point. So, honestly, right now, it is very hard to recommend the a battery car over the right spec petrol car as as things stand right now if we are to see a, a massive uh, deduction in kilowatts uh, the cost per kilowatt for your energy then potentially but i think we need to incentivize more people to get into electric cars if we want them to do so and of course there's the other elephant in the room that as of 2030 2035 for hybrids there will be simply no more combustion cars made. So eventually we're going to be forced into buying electric cars. And at the moment, you know, to the to answer the question at the top of the video, the video title, are we being sold a lie? Potentially we could well be right now. Now I bought an EV, the Porsche Taycan, because I wanted to experience it. And I love the car. Honestly, I absolutely love the car, but it's hideously expensive. It's out of reach for most people. And it is not something that you'd use as a comparison method. It's just a work of engineering in its own right. But in a real world example, cars like the Up, cars like the Golf, cars like the Mini, where you've got an ICE or battery equivalent, yes, it is a very different story. And there you really need to consider what it is you want, and whether that EV is really going to work for you and whether you can afford it and whether you want to get on board that train earlier. Now, I hope the infrastructure is going to continue to improve in the UK. It needs to. But... It is hard to recommend a battery electric vehicle over the ICE equivalent right now, given the prices of kilowatt and the price of petrol. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Stay safe, stay well. See you in the next one. Bye for now.